I've just finished reading this absurdity that is the pamphlet that was written by the Tabombeke Foundation. A pamphlet that is basically advancing the argument that to try and restore a black person to the position they would have been had colonialists not come here, had apartheid not come and taken their land, that is wrong. Basically, Tabombeki is saying that a principle that is in our common law, which is restitution in integram, that includes the returning of a person to their original position before a crime has been perpetrated against them, and the payment of damages to that person for any loss and for any benefit or unjust enrichment that is acquired by the criminal, that is wrong when it comes to black people and land. Tabombeki is basically saying that when we seek to restore millions of South Africans into the position that they would have been before the colonialists came here, before the colonialists came here to take land without compensating for that land, would be to treat white people differently, would be to discriminate against white people, and would be to go against the principle of building a non-racial South Africa. So basically, Tabombeki's non-racial South Africa is a South Africa in which Black people can be dispossessed. Black people can lose what belongs to them. Black people can be exploited for their labor without compensation. But white people can go to courts and they can contest unjust enrichment. They can contest for restitution in integram. And they can be allowed to claim any damages from anybody who owes them. But black people cannot do that. In other words, a non-racist South Africa is a South Africa in which the exploitation and the foundation of exploitation of black people is maintained to keep white people happy, to keep investors happy, and to allow for capital to continue to prosper in South Africa based on what it is they have accumulated from the exploitation of our people. It is not, therefore, when we maintain white people keeping the proceeds of crime, white people keeping the proceeds of exploiting black people, white people keeping the land and the benefits accrued from that land, when we allow them to keep that, that is not treating black people differently, but it is a non-racial South Africa. A non-racial South Africa basically is a South Africa in which wealth that is created of the exploitation of the black man is maintained at all costs and at no point does the black man ever have a standpoint to claim restitution, to claim the return of his stolen property and to claim the payment of damages for any exploitation that happened to him in the past, the present or the future. To find a document being written like this by a senior member of the ANC, a senior member of the ANC who talks about the policies of the ANC and the principles of the ANC from its founding days, the founding days of 1912, after which foundation, three years later, the same ANC allowed for a policy of sending black South Africans who did not have a vote in South Africa, Black South Africans who did not have rights in South Africa. Black South Africans who just had their land expropriated in 1912. Those very same black South Africans were sent to go and fight a white man's war in the First World War to die for white people, to die for British interests in a war that black people had no interest. And they died for those white people living in a country in which they had no rights or citizenship. That is the very same principle and policy of the ANC that we must continue to adhere to and hold on to today. Tabombegi wrote this document and this pamphlet using that principle of the founding of the ANC to use it as a yardstick that goes against the UN decolonization agenda that go against the ISESPRO treaty that looked at the decolonization of 
previously non-self-administering people. He uses the ANC's principle and the ad stick to, to nullify the decolonization agenda, to nullify the concept of equality, humanity, and dignity that comes with the ownership of land, that comes with restitution, that which was given to the Jews, that which was given to the, to the, to the, to the Asians after the Second World War, that which was given to the Jews after the Holocaust, who till today continue to receive reparations, who till today when paintings or artwork or jewelry is found that belonged to the ancestors is taken from whoever owns them, irrespective of status, irrespective of their economic benefit to nations, and restitution is given to the Jew. But the African in a world in which we seek equality, in which the UN Charter says that every human being is equal, Thabo Mbeki feels that the emancipation of a black man, the restoration of a black man to his original condition, is tantamount to reverse racism. Also that we can build a united non-racial South Africa in which black people are the servants. Thabo Mbeki totally ignores the fact that these white people in South Africa, all, all of them have benefited from the pillage, theft, subjugation, exploitation of black people through the apartheid system for which they, in which they had a mandate to vote. An apartheid government that they never overthrew. An apartheid government that they elected into power. An apartheid government that they participated in the plebiscites. They participated in keeping it in power by following the systems of giving it legitimacy. These white people who all benefited indirectly or directly from activities of exploitation of the resources, exploitation of the labor of this country, exploitation of the land of this country, exploitation of the resources of this country without ever paying compensation to the extent that whatever legitimate earnings they earned would be illegitimate because they were earned of illegitimacy. This is despite the fact that the legal principle is that no stolen property can ever become legal property over time. Tabombeki totally forgets about that because it is expedient for him to ignore the interests of blackness. It is expedient for him to ignore the effect of compound interest and the effect of primitive accumulation in building the wealth that creates a system in which black people can never rise from servitude, where black people can never rise to become more than servants of those that have accumulated capitally, capital primitively and continued future accumulation and compounding. It is so sad to find our black intellectuals becoming the administrators of colonialism through the use of polemics, discourse, and academic argument that falls short of the principles that they seek to uphold. They can never be equality. They can never be Forgiveness. They can never be democratic, a, a, a democratic society without restitution. This is why in Europe we had reparations paid for the world wars. This is why aggressors the world over, there's legal precedence that they must pay restitution. Africa is the only country that has never asked for restitution against its aggressors. And now in an educated society of Africans, in an educated South Africa, where we've got economists who understand what compound interest is, economists who understand the power of money over time, economists who understand how capitalism was built off primitive accumulation and the disposition of people for them to be labor, to earn a few and a few elite their wealth, it is surprising that you would hear a black African talk against and speak against the principle of restitution in order to bring equality, to take away poverty, and to bring the country into prosperity. Today, South Africa, the nation that has given the most resources to the world, continues to be a nation that has the highest levels of inequality in the world. 
and continues to have the pillage of its own land for resources to find itself to Western centers at the expense of the people of South Africa. Having given the world more than $7 trillion worth of, of resources, $7 trillion worth of wealth, more than any other country has ever done, South Africa continues to be a nation without a sovereign wealth fund because of people like Tabombeki who continue to believe that the system must never emancipate, must never return fair value for black labor, black ideas, black resources, black land, black factors of production. Till today in South Africa, the biggest platinum producer used to be the biggest gold producer the prices of our gold are still determined by people in Europe. The control of our gold, the control of our platinum, our copper, our coal, continues to be in the hands of Europeans. And then we have a man who talks about a principle that seeks to have a non-racial society, a non-racial society founded on the exploitation and making the black man the base of exploitation for the enrichment of those few white people who will only stay in South Africa on condition that they maintain their privilege and maintain the exploitation of the black man. This man was willing to pay the price of keeping the black man subjugated and oppressed for white people to be a part of this society. Is this what we've become, South Africa? Is this the nation you are? A nation that wants to have a society that maintains its white citizens off the pillage of black citizens so that we call ourselves a multiracial society? Are we the people that believe that black people have no right to dignity, no human rights to restoration, no human rights to compensation, no human rights to be able to accumulate their own lost value so that we perpetuate their continuous accumulation of white citizens. Is this the intellectualism that we have? Is this the policy of the ANC? A policy of maintain white citizens at all cost and the expense of our people. Maintain white citizens at all cost at the expense of a sovereign wealth fund, at the expense of the control of our resources that are running out. Only 30 years of gold are left while the ANC is in charge. Is this the society we want to live in? A society that ignores the decolonizing, decolonization agenda of the UN, 